Uh, so I'm Michael Johnston and uh, I'm an investor and advisor for Technology Will Save Us, which is a DIY technology startup, or scale up we call it now. Um, and I've also been consulting with a company called Hirsch and Mann, which is a design and technology uh, consultancy. Uh, and I also consult with other businesses and startups as well. So after two years of studying it, um, I think it's as simple as innovation is successfully exploiting ideas that address customers' needs for the future uh, in order to drive growth. Okay, I think the, the interesting thing about agencies and groups trying to make labs is one interesting thing for me is experimentation. The reality is when you're going into a complex world that's probably not what you're doing now, you need to test things out. My, my personal perspective is all strategies and ideas are just intelligent assumptions. And the only way to actually identify whether they're beyond an assumption is to test them out. So I actually think the labs are real positive. It's just how they use that internally um, to help their own system and help their clients as well. Okay, but in your mind, they're a positive thing. Yeah, I, def I definitely think they're a positive thing. Well, yeah, the, yeah, they need to have a way that they're going to work for the business in the future, be it monetization, be it learning. Uh, but I think the idea is that when you stretch your thinking, you need to test it out because it could just purely be an assumption. Uh, so the, the concept of all innovation needs to be disruptive, uh, I, yes, I agree with that. Um, I think what I talked about in my talk was the difference between sustaining innovation uh, and disruptive innovation. So sustaining innovation is about looking at your current customers or customers in the current market and adding benefits um, to increase the cost, really, so you gain more, more margin. Disruptive innovation is actually about changing the entire market. Um, I prefer that. I think it's more interesting. Uh, I think there's, you know, I think there's a stat from the from the Blue Ocean Strategy book, which is around actually the percentage of disruptive innovations launched is only like 11 percent, um, but it's allowed for more than 80 percent of the revenue growth. So I think it's the risk, but it's also there's a lot more value in it. But as a business, you need to stagger. You can't just do disruptive innovation. You have to be looking at today's customers as well as tomorrow's. So I don't think it's a one size fits all. Um, so I think I would check out Google's ATAP team, uh, which is uh, explained was the extension of Motorola's R&D team when they took it on. Um, and they've had two projects come out recently. One is like a simple move, uh, like almost like a behavior hand movement system, which is like sonar, except it's really, really fine. Um, and I think there's just some interesting things that Google are doing, publicizing these t pieces of technology to pretty much allow other people to test them and use them and find a market need. So I'd be watching ATAP if I was uh, looking at anything in the future. I think the big leap forward for me is, um, I talked about John Mader, who's, uh, well, he's a designer, he's an artist, uh, he's a leader, and he's talking very much about the role of design in the startup world at the moment the value of uh, startups like Airbnb and people with design leaders. So I work with one who's uh, pretty much a group of designers. I think the value of design in innovation is crucial because it's about understanding people and it's about creating solutions around people. Technology offers a possibility, but design helps create a solution that I think will make the difference. Do I think that it's an overshoot of invention for the sake of invention? Yes. There's shiny object syndrome all the time and I think a lot of the big innovators like Google you don't really look at is the stuff they do in the background that just grinds day-to-day -day numbers out. You know, they still need to look at their um, shareholders and if you compare them to say Amazon, Amazon do uh, lots of amazing shiny things but don't make a lot of money doing it. Um, so I think as a business you need to be able to manage future facing stuff but also more short term value and need for your business. What three tips would I give somebody with a budding idea? Make it, put it into the world see what the reaction is, try and understand who, why, and what they want it for, understand that, and then go and take that to somebody and ask for some money. Source LF are London's leading creative communications and media recruitment agency. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to this channel. Take the moment to watch another of our videos on screen now.